Have you ever used Midjourney? It's a really powerful way to generate images. You write a prompt, wait for it to spit out four samples, and then you pick the one that you like the most to refine, change, re-roll, and play around with. What if I told you that there was a new tool that lets you do this to spit out React components instead of images? And what if I told you that tool was built by Vercel and Shad CM? Well, I'd have some pretty good news to share, and I'm lucky I get to do that because v0.dev is one of the coolest new products I've seen in a while. Quick disclaimer, Vercel does sponsor the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video. They've been genuinely hyped about this internally. I haven't seen Jared this excited in a while. So without further ado, let's dive in to v0.dev, which might just be the future of how we build React components. This is just v0.dev, private right now, but go sign up for the waitlist if you want to be able to give it a shot yourself in the near future. The UI is pretty simple because it should be. So let's give one a shot. I see a fun example example here of a sleek pricing page for a SaaS. So let's try that. Even from this UI as it's generating, you can see a lot of why it's so powerful. We can duplicate this prompt and the work that we're doing on it now. We can create a new prompt straight from it. We can also share a link to a specific prompt to other people on the team to take a look at, kind of like how you share a Figma board, but at an earlier stage. Actually, it's really interesting and allows me to work with others and see how they're doing their prompting. And obviously, there's also the code button where generated code will be spit out once it's all generated. As you see, the generation's coming through. What's really interesting is it's adding component by component and updating those components as it goes. But we see multiple different starting points generating here. Obviously, as with all similar AI models, there's a like and dislike, which is really powerful for them to learn from and use to generate additional feedback to make better templates and generate better code in the future. This is a huge part of why ChatGPT has gotten so good, because with ChatGPT, they take the feedback from every person prompting to refine the model and help it generate better results. Of the three that it generated, this is the one I like the most. If I want this pro tier wrapped with one of those bright colored, most popular boxes, I can just tell it to do that. So wrap pro tier with brightly colored, most popular box. So now it's taking this option because it's the one I was hovering over and it's generating a refinement of it with the prompt. This is really cool because you can instruct the AI to make changes to the UI once it's generated it. Still going, all of this should be identical, but ideally this middle part's going to be different. Interesting, I was thinking it would wrap it, but this indicator there actually looks a little bit better than what I was intending. So that's actually pretty handy. Wrap the pro tier in a border to make the most popular stand out more. You also have the ability here to click a specific element so that it only affects this element. So let's click here, update. And now it should wrap this with a brightly colored banner to highlight the most popular. Look at that. Okay, this is really cool. I hadn't played with the click a specific element button and that's selling me on this even more so. Hey, I'm noticing this corner is a little off here with the most popular. So let's just click the whole thing and say, fix the top right corners border radius so it matches other corners. Okay, so this is just a dumb CSS thing where it's applying the wrong border radius to that, I think, or there's an overflow that's missing. But we can fix that because I can go straight into the code that it generates, and it's just React code. If I want to play with this, I can literally copy the code. I don't have a project running yet, so I'll make one quick. Create next app at latest. We'll call this b0 test. I'll actually make a new file for this. Components, pricing.tsx, paste. Save. It looks like it's struggling a bit with prettier styled formatting. I might even advise the team to run the code through prettier once before posting it. Regardless, one quick save fixes that. And now I can change this to pricing. Throw that in here. Call these class names. I don't need them. Sure, all the Vim users cringe as I scroll on run dev. And look at that. So we can see here that this corner is the wrong border radius. So let's go find where that is in the code. Interesting that they put this element in here twice. Hmm. So it's not perfect. This HTML element got left over when this other one was generated. It doesn't actually appear to, well, appear anywhere. So I can delete that. It doesn't change anything. Actually, it does change something. It fixes that corner. So it seems like this one element got left over accidentally. Now that actually looks really good. Obviously, we're in dark mode with the CSS for this project because it's an initted uh, next app and I just used the default CSS. But it's really cool that I can copy paste this code, delete one element, and it looks almost exactly how I would want it to look. And it's not some package I'm depending on. There's no imports here other than next link. It also has a link, funny enough, commented at the top there straight to where this was generated, which is really, really helpful if somebody wants to go and prompt to do another change. Let's actually try. Can you remove it? I won't ask, I'll tell. It's AI, you don't have to be polite. And it removed the wrong one. 
So we'll go back a step and say the most popular element is included twice. The second inclusion is correct. Please remove the first one and leave the text in the card. Let's see if it's smart enough to listen to that instruction properly. Sadly, it does not appear it was. But again, this is actually part of why I like this tool. Even though it has rough edges like this and might not be able to figure out everything you want to do with it, it spits out the source code. This is giving me real code to play with that fits in my next app the way any other code would. In the future, it can obviously generate not just next code, but it could generate things for any HTML website, any view project or anything else. But I'm going to give this generation a thumbs up because this was the closest to what I wanted by far. And I want them to have the feedback that was pretty good. How about we generate some more things? Let's say I want to generate a button with our brand styles. Let's say we're a purple company, a purple submit button with a cute B icon. Looks like it didn't have a B icon ready to go, but it did have a bug icon, which we'll give it credit. Pretty close. How about we start with this one because the contrast is pretty good. Make the purple darker and change the icon to an envelope. I cannot tell that that's an envelope. Let's have it use some different icon. Actually, let's see how it's doing the icon in the first place. It's inlining an SVG. Fascinating. That doesn't give me much control at all. We can still play with it, though. Let's pick a different icon, because I know they put a lot of icons in here. I don't know if there's a list anywhere, but you're able to have common things. Change this into a share button with the text saying share and an icon with an arrow. Hopefully it knows what a share button is and can figure this out. Not quite. Change the icon to a share icon. Huh, if you just tell it to do a share icon, you can figure it out just fine. Cool. So now we have this component. And once again, we can paste that right in our code base. Share button.tsx and paste. But wait, there's something missing. Does it not? Oh, y'all might know what's going on here. Why is this import not working? As I hinted at the beginning, there's a certain developer who was involved with this project, ShadCM. If you're not already familiar with ShadUI, it's pretty dope. It's a bunch of copy-pastable components that use Radix and Tailwind and React to make it very easy to quickly build really good applications. It's fantastic. I've been super impressed with it. But it also can be useful for tools like this. Because a button isn't just an HTML element. You can do a lot of cool things with it. I'm sure if I went and changed this to just lowercase button and comment this out, I'm sure this will look fine, but it won't have a lot of the behaviors that Shad UI makes possible. So if we hop in here, go to code, we can run this command. I have to init, I guess, totally fine. NPX, init. Ooh, I like this, that they'll let you pick the different base colors. We'll go with slate. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, yes, cool. And now we have Shad UI set up. It is that easy to add that library, but again, it's not really a library, it's a collection of components. And what it just did here is it generated a new, I didn't do it yet. It generated a utils, which includes their class names, Tailwind Merge, and it did install a couple of dependencies that will make authoring these packages much easier, including class variance authority, Lucid React, CLSX, Tailwind Merge, and Tailwind Animate. But the result of these things being included is we can now build really good interactive components. Should have have a new component. Yeah, okay. I screwed up because I have app components and then I just have components here. So the UI components are reusable components for things like this. And I can almost virtually guarantee now that if I comment this back in, switch back to uppercase button. Oh no, what happened? Hmm. I might have screwed something up. Hmm. This is a new one for me. Oh, I see what happened here. That's really funny. If anybody else runs into this, what happened is I'm using the source directory, but the Shad UI bundler assumed that I wasn't. So it put app in the root, even though it should have put it in here. So there's additional CSS in here that I need that was put in the wrong place. So I'll do that there. And it seems like it checks for app before it checks for source app. So now that I've done that, it should be able to resolve my file-based routing correctly. And now we have a Shad UI button, rounded, has all the fancy expected behaviors, accessibility, and all the the crazy stuff that you normally have to implement yourself with tools like Radix. With buttons, it's not as complex, but once you have things like drop downs, it can get very complex quickly, like a collapsible, something like this, or more complex, like a custom date picker that has a good UI. You might recognize this because it's almost identical to Vercel's and a lot of other companies. These things are hard to build right. And having things like Date FNS and Lucid React all implemented properly for you to have a really good experience, that's surreal. I cannot believe that Shad UI is as good as it is. And it's a huge part of why something like V0 is as powerful as it is. I'm hyped. Really cool tool. Should we do one more challenging generation? Let's give it something fun. A cool home page with a background gradient for a developer tool that helps with productivity. 
Not bad at all. For first generation, these are fine. I think this one's my favorite. Let's try and refine it. Make the colors of the gradient to dark blues. Change the gradient to be vertical and dark blue to black. Black on top. Make the dark blue darker. Make the dark blue in the gradient even darker. It does not seem to want to make that blue darker. But once again, this is fine. Because I can yoink this, hop into our components folder. Again, named horribly. This is a quick video. We'll have landing page.tsx paste. We now have landing page. Again, smart enough to import from components UI, which is super handy. That's pretty dope. The hover behavior is not great. Obviously, you can change that yourself. But what I want to do is make this blue even darker. It's already blue 900. So I'm not really sure the easiest way to go darker. I can't just do a thousand and they don't have further stuff. So I could overlay it on top of a black background and set the opacity of this to be different. Let's see if it can do that and make the gradient and overlay with 30% opacity set background underneath to black. Well, <laughs> I did not think it would do that that well. I, I'm scared to see the code because this could go very badly, but uh, this code is good. I'm going to be very happy. Landing page. Yeah, did this correct. Absolute inset zero, background to black, from black to blue 900, opacity 30. That's really good. This is how I would have done that. And now that actually looks great. Might not look as good in the recording, but the gradient here looks beautiful on my machine. I'm pumped. I did not expect this to be this good. I've been sitting here playing with it for so long that my room is now darker. That's how hyped I am. I came in hoping it would be cool, but I actually can see myself using this a bunch. What about you? Did you think this was cool? Are there AI tools that you're using in your workflow? And how do you feel about this mid journey type experience where you pick a good starting point and refine? I think it's really cool and helps me understand the AI and how it thinks a lot better. If you like this, let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in more stuff about AI, I'll pin a video in the corner that I did all about how AI might actually end up taking our jobs. Thank you guys as always. Really appreciate y'all. Peace nerds.